welcome to the Golden Realms Inheriting the Panay Sugidanon series. Please allow me to introduce our speaker for today, writer Early Sol Gadong of Hubon Manunulat, who is one of the movers in the Iloilo art and literature community. Maayong aga sa tanan. Good morning, everyone uh, watching on Zoom and on our Facebook page. I am Early Sol Gadong. Welcome to our webinar series entitled uh, Golden Realms, a series of talks on Panay Sugidanon, a journey of art and storytelling with Panay mythology in relation to its contemporary context and relation to other Asian mythologies. This webinar series is actually part of the Golden Realms Inheriting the Panay Sugidanon Initiative, which aims to honor the Panay Sugidanon. Thrive Art Projects has been working on a manga adaptation of sections of the Sugidanon slated for release uh, on December uh, 2021 in both English and Japanese languages. The said manga is also the subject of today's uh, very interesting talk. Golden Realms Inheriting the Panay Sugidanun is a literary project under the Japan Foundation's Asian Literature Project, Yomu. And so before we start the lectures, let's recount the three webinars that have been held so far. The first one featured the landmark anthropological research of Dr. Alice Magos and Ms. Rara Ramirez into telling the stories of the Panay Bukidnon and the Sugidanon. Meanwhile, in the second session, Attorney Genevieve Tingson Wuthrich, a representative of the NCIP, shared the processes behind the indigenous people's rights and intellectual property rights. And the third one discussed worldviews in Japanese and Filipino folklores, including the Sugidanun. In our third webinar, we also explored the parallels between Japanese and Philippine mythologies with Professor Norio Akasaka and Dr. Alan Deratin. Now for our fourth webinar, we will give the spotlight to the artists who translated the oral into the visual, creating a version of the epics that will be accessible to the younger audience. We are joined today by the team from Thrive Art Projects, three wonderful creators of uh, visual arts. But before we go much deeper into the webinar, I would like to remind everyone that uh, should you have any questions during the talk, please do not hesitate to send them through the chat box here on Zoom or comment them uh, on Facebook so that we may address them later at the Q&A portion. Now, before I introduce our speakers, I would first like to share a special video message from Tai Mulok Caballero, one of the indigenous chanters in Panay, Philippines, who is keeping the oral tradition of the Sugidanun alive today. Ako kare si Rumulo Amang Baoy Caballero. Uh, bali, si 25 years old ako to paro. So well awarded. Sir, for outstanding in the Indigenous people leadership. Kag ako ang uno nga kuna nga manunutlo sa uh, school for living tradition. Isa lang ang school for living tradition iya sa ilong ng panay. Uh, ang maminsahe ko lang sa bataan na nagpamati ang kultura nga dya yung sugidanan if it center hindi ninyo pagkakaya kay kamaan kao amo dya ang binilin ka mga malap ka mga mangga kaya sa uh, central front ka panay ka gusto nanda na hindi matura uh, sa IPDs namo sa 29 
ang mga mensahe ko lang. Hindi natin pag durahan dyan mga bagay ka. Uh, di di karantin natin. Kaya na di parahan ko gobyerno. Pagtawaan kita kay Gayunan nga may kaadlawan ang atin nga uh, pagkatribo pa na ito. Ah, uh, maminsahe ko lang ka sa salwa. Kanugon ang um, sugidan nun kung maluwa. Kain sa man, nakaduro nga seminar ginagduran ko sa Dapaw, sa Tagum City, sa Cordillera ko. Ang mudaya ang ginasuggest namun ang uh, partis ka school for living tradisyon. Anda to ya sa gawi lang ka mga malam ng damo ang napanudlo ng nasa anda ng SLT. Pero di ya sa panay nakadag daw pana anga si kidlat kag si dapo saway mana pinakadalom pagidya inyong tradisyon kay antis nga way pa magkurang kalayo naman aninyo kon sinoy mga tao mura gani nga daw na hit daw na daw naga uli kit kulit nga kumadura us pinakadlaw nga indi ka mga bata mo panukli kinanglan antis ako magdaliwan sa kalibutan ibilin ko kit sa kabata ang mapan ko lang, ma-advise ko lang, uh, kung may mga drawing ka mo, antis ka mo nga magpagwa, kung di ninyo pagwa, ipatsik tanay, kaya basi magwa sa pinakadlaw na sala. Nagpasalamat din ako sa Japan Foundation, kaya uh, dyan, dyan ka niyo na kagilid, tanda, kaya kung magdirikta sa naknapan niyo ay patikin na iyo. Salamat din sa pag-cover ng uh, uh, Epic Center. Uh, may, mga, may mga dayan ako nga naobserbahan nga daw gin ko na lang bala, gin ko dir noon na lang, pero ay nagasunod, ay nagasunod sa dinumaan na Epic Center. Gin duga nga na lang, hindi ako gusto. Kaya ang sugidanon, hindi gusto nga buhinan, hindi gusto nga dugaan, hinahanglan kung amo ang ginapamunuan, kag ano ang istorya, amo lang na, hindi, pag, hindi pagpapulak-bulakan. Na o'y balaogan dahi dali ang natulugay, dugay ang dali dali ang sugi, nagmitang sugi, tanang madali, Sinalipit bata ka at kasi ka sesingko yang at kamangian is kayang bolawan isi of the tio to tulut taga loma pao pasanun ton sa humba patausen sa dalo yun sa lo Takkan kalau dan bilukan kalayagan mepeliket mau bling si mungsat borola kau adikono ay iu hai ida guru huni niu tu tulung gondol um itlarano goni kino ong harang dan ida tong parang kuton sangli. Harung mam kau sang dan bag om mga yao dan yuk dan kay agong rupikalay karatung iwan entar enlamang baling hawa day hawa ketiku day parang hutan isumbol fag. Wayangan sa paggawe kabiday sa pagpaiwan iwan sa dalada ng sulgan sa tuu karang bayo kanwarak bayawing solawarahime 
Salamat ged tay mulok for uh, gracing this webinar and for that message. Now at this point, please allow me to welcome our speakers who are all incredible visual artists from Iloilo. To begin with, we have Mia Reyes, a documentary filmmaker, graphic artist, and illustrator for comics and manga. Reyes has extensive experience in the comic book industry with her work as comic book illustrator for Jam Mango Comics and freelance colorist, inker, penciler, and background artist for Glasshouse Graphics. Mia Reyes is the founder of Cartilia Comics and the creator of the award-winning Generala. Our second speaker, Mr. Eric Barbosa Jr., is a software engineer, photographer, and filmmaker. He incorporates his software expertise in most of his works. He joined no numerous exhibitions and has had two solo exhibitions featuring his photography. In 2015, he one week earlier, which was shown in film festivals including Cinema Region. And for our, for our last speaker, Christopher Brasileño is an independent studio artist and university instructor at the Digital Media and Interactive Arts Program of Central Philippine University and Bachelor of Fine Arts Program of University of San Agustin. Recently, he mounted his second solo show at the NCCA Gallery entitled Ilongo Republic. Brasileño combines traditional and digital media in his art 
uh, practice to create realistic and representational paintings and illustrations. Ladies and gentlemen, our three speakers here now with their talks. Hello everyone, I'm Mia Reyes. I'm one of the comic artists for the Golden Realms manga. Today, I'll be discussing the process of how we make the manga. I have to admit, when I first started with this project, I have very little knowledge about the Sugidanon epic since there is very limited access to the source material. Through this project, I was given a glimpse of the Sugidanon world. I hope that this manga will introduce everyone about the epic and will be curious enough to do their own research. Please take note if ever you are planning to make a story based or inspired from the Sugidanon epic, you will need to ask permission from the Panay Bukidnon elders through the NCIP and IKSP. The copyright of the story and characters belongs with the Panay Bukidnon indigenous group. That's why it is very important to secure permits for this. For the concept art, we were provided materials by the research team in order to help us flesh out the world of Sugidanon. Here is how I interpret the environment based on the provided reference and to visualize it in the manga. The Balangay 3D was modeled by our 3D artist Eric Barbosa. Here's what the Balangay looks like when it was drawn for the manga. For the characters, please take note that the concept art you are looking at is subject for final approval from the elders and this is presented for this webinar. For the characters, Bagsang was modeled after a reticulated python, a species of a snake commonly found here in Panay. For Humadapnon, he is the main character of the chapter of the manga that I'm working on. He is described to have gold skin and hair. Here are the photo references and artistic interpretation of what Humadapnon looks like. So for the manga, I decided to create a simplified version of the character since drawing the ornate patterns of the clothing would take us a long time to finish the comic. Nagmalitong Yawa is the heroine of the story. She is the wife of Humadapnon and she is said to be the most beautiful woman in their land. One of the reference photo that was provided was that of Megan Young. Having reference photo of the character that you'd like to emulate, I find this very useful for me so it would help make the characters look more believable. For Laon Sina, she was designed based on the illustration that was provided by the research group. She is depicted to be wearing a golden salakot. For Luyong Kabig, I also designed the character based on the illustration that was also provided. So Luyong Kabig is said to be connected with Bagsang since their breath are linked together. So among the characters, she is my favorite because despite Bagsang being this ruthless seven-headed snake, she finds ways to resolve a conflict that involves Bagsang. After we are finished with the character concept art, we then start with the manga creating process. When I was given the script in a prose form, I had to divide the script into pages so I can make adjustment which part of the paragraph belongs in a page. When creating the manga, I prefer to use the Huion monitor tablet since it's very easy for me to draw 
directly digitally. For the software, I prefer to use the Clip Studio Paint since it has better pen brushes and you can draw on vector layer. The software itself is much more affordable compared to Adobe Photoshop. After I have finished assigning the pages, I would then start creating the thumbnail or what we call the storyboard layout. I create the thumbnail so it is easy for me to see the flow of the story and to make correction on the panels. After I'm done with the thumbnails, that's when I started working on the sequential pages. I start with drawing the line art for the characters and I give instruction to the assistant on how to add the background and the color. After the page of the manga has been completed, we will now proceed with the process of lettering. Now, the manga is ready to be uploaded and sent to the printers once it has been validated and approved by Panay Bukidnon Elders. Here's the preview of the comic. Thank you for listening and I hope you check out the manga once it's out. I'm Eric Barbosa, a software engineer, and I've been doing freelance work for a long time now. I've been doing work from home before work from home became a thing. I do art on the side, in various forms as I can foster. I was fixated on photography before the pandemic hit. I had to put photography on the back burner due to obvious health and safety concerns. Consequently, I focused on another medium that I could do at home and had a bit of background on. That's 3D. I'm here to share our points on why we decided to use 3D as well as to explain our methods and processes in using 3D in aiding in the creation of the manga. I will also share some of our notable experiences, the challenges we've met along the way, and a few important things that I've learned. Alright, let's start. Why use 3D? The first point is that it is already used by actual manga artists. If you do a quick Google on the use of 3D in manga, you will find that many manga creators already use it. The second point is that ideation with 3D is fast and the result is always close to a usable state. With 3D, you can just mix and match stuff and get the concept that you want. The creative decisions come fast because you see the results immediately. And most of the time, the results of ideation could be used directly in your work. The next point is that 3D can help our manga creators in placing elements in the panel. Because 3D is spatially correct, it could help our manga creators in placing elements in their panels. It will also help in shading and coloring. Another point that we considered was that the created assets can be reused. May it be in the same project or other projects. And lastly, with 3D, we'll be able to present Panay Bukidnon culture in contemporary media, a media which is booming right now. Now I will explain the 3D methods we used in our processes. The first method is blocking. Blocking is the method of combining volumes such as cubes, spheres, and other objects to get the rough shape of the asset you want to create. The next method is sculpting. This method usually comes after when you are satisfied with your blocking. Here you would sculpt as you would sculpt in the real world, but you could use tools that would rather not be available in the real world. You can go as detailed as you want, granting your machine can handle the load. Next method is texturing. Texturing could come after blocking or sculpting depending on the needs of the asset. In this method, you add the color to the asset as well as other properties like roughness, metalness, etc. 
Micro details could also be added in this method. The next method is asset bashing. In this method, you combine other assets to create a new asset. This is the mix and match mentioned earlier. And the last method is layouting. In this method, you finally get to place your assets in a scene. The process of creating assets is fairly straightforward. I get info and references, then I create the first version of the asset. Then it is validated by the elders. If there are any corrections, I update the asset and have it validated again. The cycle repeats until the elders are satisfied of the design. The process of creating a scene is also simple. Once the asset is done, I place the asset in a library. The manga artists can then use the asset for their work. The second process of creating scenes starts with the manga artist providing a sketch of the placement of the asset in the panel. I then lay out the asset accordingly. After that, I render an image of the laid out assets with transparent background and give it to the manga artist. Now, onto the notable experiences and challenges we've encountered. One of the notable experiences that we've had while working on this project was the limited communication with team members due to the COVID pandemic. There are times that we are planning to meet, but then there is a city imposed lockdown, so it gets cancelled. Another challenge is the technological limitations on communicating with the Panay Bukudnon elders. For example, when I create assets, I do this on a relatively large screen, but when elders validate them, they do this on a small phone screen. A challenge that I did not really expect is that fantasy elements versus real elements can easily be miscommunicated at times. Sometimes, when we design an asset and have it validated, even though we carefully consider the design, it would need corrections on details we didn't expect. Challenge that I expected, but kind of underestimated, is the technological requirements of working in 3D. 3D work is demanding in terms of processing power, and it can easily overload systems if not optimized or used correctly. And finally, I will share the important things that I have learned while working on this project. Limitations on the usability of 3D in creating the manga. For example, when adding environmental elements onto a panel, sometimes 3D is not the best way to go. In cases where a forest is just a mass of dark shadows, it is better to use an image and paint over that. Next, I now have a better understanding of the state and manners of the Panay Bukidnon culture and a realization of the heritage cycle. Another thing that I realized is that after this project, we will have lots of usable 3D assets which we could use on other projects. And I will definitely continue working on what we have started in this project. It could be in my own capacity, but it would be really great if it's in another project. And that concludes my short presentation. Thank you for listening, and I hope you guys have a good day. Good morning, my name is uh, Christopher Brasileño. I'm a visual artist and uh, for this particular project, I am the project manager for Thrive Arts Project Iloilo. Um, in this particular webinar, I will be talking about my personal experiences as uh, the project manager. And also I'm an illustrator and I did some drawings for this manga. And I will also talk about the process of creating the manga, working with the uh, researchers and the writers and indigenous peoples. Um, the objective of my talk is uh, to share my personal experience as a project manager, artist, and uh, observer during the course of the project. Um, provide a practical guide for future creatives on how to get involved in the local or indigenous heritage cycle and show a glimpse of the process of creating a manga through the presentation of works in progress and images. 
uh, before I start with my presentation, I'd like you to meet some of the artists uh, who took part in the creation of this particular um, manga project. Hi, my name is Jay Vasquez. I support a versatile artist and I'm doing freelance illustration work uh, for the past three years. I uh, mainly focus ko ako sa comic at manga style. Uh, I also do album covers para sa mga indie artists, uh, specifically uh, music artists. And I'm also a street photographer. Uh, hobby ko po ang pagpipicture ng mga tao. <laughs> Isa po ako sa mga lead artists ng Golden Rings manga. Uh, ako po yung gumagawa ng drafts, uh, panel, layout, uh, inking, at final rendering. Isa sa mga challenges na na-experience ko sa paggawa ng Golden Rings manga ay yung time management kasi tuwing gabi lang po ako nakakapag-drawing uh, dahil po sa mga gawain bahay na kailangan gawin tuwing umaga. Uh, tsaka yung style po ng manga nito. Kasi isa po akong versatile artist tsaka maraming styles po ako na natutunan sa previous work ko so kailangan ko po mag-adjust. Uh, at gumawa ng panibagong style para sa manga na ito. Sobrang excited po ako sa project na ito dahil nakakasama ko po yung iba pang local artist or comic artist dito sa Iloilo. Isang reason rin po ay yung exposure na matatanggap namin kapag naging successful yung project na ito. Oh, hi! I am Belian is Aragon and I am known as Zetaman. So, I am a digital artist in illustration, concept art, and visual development. For this project, my role is a colorist. So I paint the pages and also put colors in every panel. The biggest struggle that I have in creating the manga is actually balancing my life as a graduating student and also in working the manga itself, which is kind of tiring, but it is fun, it is fun, and I apply the cues and colors in every panel, in every setting, in every character, giving them life. So I thank you for Japan Foundation and Pride Arts Projects to giving me this opportunity to work with them. So also we thank you for your support. So I thank you and God bless. Hi, my name is Vix Kulashan and I'm a digital artist. I create backgrounds, illustrations, and animations. For this project that we are making, I am the colorist. The biggest challenge in this manga is the design of the characters. Our design needs to be approved by the authors of the manga first before we can proceed the development in a limited amount of time. I really like the stories. It is very interesting and it has potential to compete with other mythologies that we already know. Okay, so those are just uh, some of the artists um, involved in the project. Uh, so we have many artists uh, from Mia Reyes who had her talk earlier, uh, to Eric Barbosa who did uh, the um, uh, 3D models for the backgrounds, to Isaac, Bravo, and uh, the researchers, Libby Limoso, um, Christian, and Theodore, and also to our writers, um, Aline and Adele. So in this particular part of the presentation, I'm going to uh, give you just a, a brief description or a summary of what we have been doing since June or July when we started the project. So um, it's a very, um, uh, a lot of work has been done. and. Um, uh, we're very excited to finally uh, present to you the uh, manga when it will be out in December. So um, this uh, project is a lot, there's a lot of components to this project uh, and not only the manga, but we also had documentation or uh, research. Uh, we translated the, um, um, the audio recordings by um, uh, the archae um, anthropologist um, Hokano, who um, recorded the audio of the chant chanters during the 1950s. Um, our research team um, 
listen to the reels and they were able to um, translate the archaic language into modern Karaya and um, were able to um, reference also the um, uh, chants of the current uh, chanters. And we also had academic aspect for the webinar wherein we invited um, experts in various fields like uh, anthropology, research, and uh, folklore from uh, Japan, from the US, and um, in Manila. And we were able to really talk about the project in a lot of context. And uh, lastly, we have the translation to contemporary art, which is uh, would call manga. And we worked with uh, our researchers, worked with the IPs, um, especially uh, with Tai Mulo and Tai Pulding. And um, uh, we used their chants, we recorded their chants and used their stories to produce manga, uh, which is totally um, uh, based on their version or their um, own chants. And our writers translated them into the narrative which can fit the text of the manga. And our illustrators took those um, narrative and uh, gave life through visualizing them in the form of figures and illustrations. So how did we start the project? Uh, of course, uh, the first thing that we did was to uh, uh, apply with um, uh, national commissions on indigenous peoples. So there is a process uh, to when we uh, when we would like to um, engage with uh, indigenous peoples with regards to their uh, IKSP or indigenous knowledge systems and practices. So um, some of the things that the indigenous peoples do, such as um, their uh, chants or their technology or their stories, uh, these are considered their own IKSP or indigenous knowledge systems and practices. And these are uh, protected by under the Indigenous Peoples Rights Act. And before we can um, uh, utilize them in research or in other purposes, uh, we need to apply to the um, appropriate uh, agencies of the government. <laughs> and uh, of course, after that, we need to get approval from the IP community uh, before we can really um, push through with our project, which we did. And uh, we are thankful to the IP community for uh, giving us this opportunity. And um, it's, when only we're given the go signal, we can start our research. But also, um, some of our um, team members have been doing research for a long time already and have been engaging with the uh, indigenous peoples for a very long time. So uh, they have the trust and the respect of the indigenous peoples. And after that, uh, when we already have the stories from the chanters, uh, our writers, um, Adele and Alin, wrote it, um, original um, narrative based on the Sugidanon and uh, giving their own twist to it. But of course, uh, always uh, keeping in mind the integrity of the original source material and the, uh, created dialogue for it. And after that, uh, we created pre-visualizations, meaning we uh, made drafts or we made um, ideations or sketches or studies of these characters, which will be um, given to the elders, the indigenous peoples for their validation. They can give their comments and also our researchers can uh, give their comments as well, basing on what is available uh, that has been researched before. What do these characters look like? What are their powers? What clothing do they wear? So these are very important parts of the research. And um, when we have our um, images already, then we can do with our manga production. And when we're done with our manga, which is um, in, in the process of um, doing it now, uh, when we're done with it um, early December, we can still give it back to the um, elders for their um, additional validation and their final checking. And uh, when they're given their go signal, given us the certificate, um, then we can present it. Um, or publish it in the form of a book or whatever uh, media that was agreed upon in the um, memorandum of agreement. So um, the process of um, engaging with um, indigenous peoples with regards to their IKSP is uh, it has to go through the FPIC process or uh, uh, free prior and uh, informed consent um, process that um, we have to go through this is a very 
um, it appears to be a very complex process, but when you have started it, it actually is logical. And uh, all these steps are needed in order to go um, uh, as a form of a check and balance for um, the researchers, for the artists and the indigenous people so that they can have an agreement. Uh, there's a lot of steps, but these are just necessary in order to protect the integrity of the source material. So speaking of the source material, um, we got our content uh, directly from the chanters themselves. So our uh, one of our lead researcher, uh, Libby Limoso, have been working with the indigenous peoples for uh, a long time. And uh, we got our uh, some of these manuscripts and recordings from uh, Taipulbin Caballero, no? uh, Leopoldo Caballero. Um, and currently, uh, he's uh, recording and doing validation with the uh, uh, Romulo Taimulok Caballero. So these are direct um, recordings from these uh, chanters who are um, from the chanters who um, gave, gave their time and gave their uh, knowledge to our researchers. And uh, these are examples of the audio recordings um, recorded by Libby Limoso and um, audio recording and video recordings as well. So uh, these are audios and videos. These are uh, used for documentation and just to ensure that the um, uh, source from the chanters themselves are kept and protected. And um, um, that can be utilized for uh, projects like this one, like, like a manga, for example. And um, also, we also had access to manuscripts from Fuji Teodosho. So these are uh, stories that um, uh, they directly uh, recorded from the um, chanters themselves from uh, Taipulgin. And uh, some of our related literature and references that um, we, can, we have also used as uh, related literature and we use as guides sometimes are the original recordings of uh, uh, F. Landa Hukano, which uh, uh, the Central Philippine University uh, Library was uh, kind enough to um, uh, give us access and we were able to, the research team, uh, were able to listen to them and transcribe them again and listen and compare it to the uh, uh, original um, transcriptions and uh, translations. And they were able to um, uh, um, allow the current chanters to listen to these uh, chanters to these original recordings and compare it to um, uh, if, uh, let they, uh, they see if there's uh, some changes or there's some um, uh, difference between the two chants. And these are what they're working on. And i um, very thankful for to our research team, uh, Libby Limoso, Jan Ripareño, um, Christian, um, Jeyo, and um, Theodore Bautista for spending their time listening to lots of reels and uh, lots of hours of listening uh, listening to archaic Peneraya or a language spoken by the um, uh, the Panay Bukid Nun and um, um, transcribing them, translating them into the different languages that we used as a reference for the stories. And uh, once we have all those research material, all, all those um, information, uh, we're able to do a, uh, a glossary or um, character bible or a set of descriptions for the many characters which is useful for the um, illustrators and the artists so these are presented as a graph of their identifying marks for example skin color hair other names temperament so these are very useful for artists would like who think visually would like to present their uh, images basing on what is available, what is available uh, in written form and what is available from the ideas or from the interpretations of the chanters themselves. And we also did some production design uh, references or mood boarding. So once we have those um, um, character Bible and descriptions, we're able to gather references from of various sources from our pictures, from the um, other uh, images from museums that are related to the indigenous peoples, and even from the 
uh, items and assets from the Panay Bukidnon themselves, from their clothing, from their shields and their spears and their bolo. So all of these are utilized to create production design, which will be used as a reference for the artists when creating their uh, visions and their imagery. And these are examples of the previsualization that we did of the character Labao Dungun by uh, one of the artists, uh, Jay Vasquez. Uh, of course, um, uh, the um, disclaimers that these are early previsualizations and uh, these are also still pending the final uh, validation from our elders. Of course, the elders also cannot um, react unless they see an image. So we have to prepare an image before they can give their reactions or comments. So for example, they see this image, they would say that uh, it would be better if the um, hair is the, this particular length or this particular color. And we also did thumbnailing. Uh, this is done by uh, one of the artists for color, Peldayan Aragon. So before a, uh, the art director, or uh, there's not really an art director, but for example, how we decide what image should be included in one of the panels uh, the artist would do some dealings so we can choose and can give our feedback especially from the writers themselves they can choose and they can give feedback on what is best shown in the panels uh, we also do uh, color keys color scripts and just to give different versions of the same image and see which is the best lighting which is the best uh, color scheme or the best um, version of color that can be utilized um, in the entire panels of the manga. Um, so panels, this is the early, one of the first um, examples created by Mia Reyes that set the tone for succeeding um, illustrations. Um, this shows um, Tumadapnon in, uh, in somewhere in the wilderness, no? or in the world of the Sugidanon. And of course, one uh, important aspect of our uh, manga process is that uh, we utilize a lot of 3D modeling and we are thankful to our uh, 3D modeling artist, Eric Barbosa, who did a lot of models so that our images are original. We did not take them from um, uh, online sources or just any other references we had to create them or the artist Eric had to create them from scratch, uh, modeling it from a basic cube or in the, with the use of a software until he's able to create um, this representation of Bagsang. So our artists are, um, it would be easier for the artist to visualize and to paint over and to create line art since they already have a basis for the character, yeah, which really um, sped up the workflow of this particular uh, manga project. And um, so one important aspect that uh, I would like to reiterate um, and uh, would like to um, um, show is the validation process. So there's not, it, there's not really a specific um, a step by step guide on how to do the validation, but basically uh, we are presenting the images to the IP elders or the chanters themselves and we get their feedback so that um, um, it is uh, the images taste through to what is uh, said in the recordings in the actual Sugidanon story itself. So, in order to um, uh, retain the integrity of the source material, uh, from the examples of uh, taken by our researcher, Libu Limoso, uh, there are several steps in the validation process, starting with comments from the writers. So our writers also have their vision uh, because they wrote some aspect of the manga narrative themselves. And uh, we have um, uh, inputs also from researchers because they are the ones who have read or gone through the text and listen to the reels, and they're able to uh, get information from these uh, uh, texts and references. And of course, our consultant, um, and ultimately from the Panay Bukid non chanters, uh, we, we show the images to them and they can give their comments. So, in the next slides, I'd like to show you how um, Taimuluk would give his comments. So, 
um, the character Amburukai has gone through a lot of changes from the initial sketch of Fem de Yan um, to the digital work. And um, it has gone through, it was, it was shown to the um, um, to our IP elders, to Taimulok, and he would say that uh, if he sh he would uh, see that the hair is long, he would say wa'ay tibuhok sa itsura, meaning wala, uh, Amburukai does not have uh, hair on her face, and um, her hair looks like a sponge, and it's not really um, long, it's only up until the uh, shoulders and also he would say mapintas. So we have, mapintas means violent. So we have to uh, display the look of violence. How, um, how does Amburukai show violence in her actions or her demeanor? So it, uh, he also said that pito kadangaw ang kalapadun kadaghan, meaning seven, um, the length of uh, the, um, uh, fingers now the width of the thumb to the um, uh, index finger that is what is one dangao and that is the width of the breast or the um, uh, chest and you would say matambuk by indi tibutod so meaning uh, fat but the stomach is not that big and ang, ang balahibo na halin sa hawak hasta sa tuhod nga daw palda so that would mean the hair surrounding her waist is uh, appears to look like a, a skirt and it would go up until the knee the knees and it would say tatlo ka sabut nga bulawan um dua magtimbang sa hita and uh, isa sa idalong ka uh, pusod so would, that would mean uh, aburukai has three pubic hairs that are gold, one dangling just beneath the, um, the pusod, no? and then uh, the, thigh, the thighs, one the left thigh and the right thigh. And um, uh, these are comments from the uh, chanter, Romulo Caballero. And also, um, we'd say, ang tawas tas abaga. So it's only up until uh, the human uh, is up until her Amburukai's shoulder. So that's how big Amburukai is. Now, finally, we're able to assess how big or what is the scale or in proportion to the human figure so that we can be able to uh, best show it when we do it in the manga. And these are the different um, evolutions of Amburukai and how it appears in the manga is this one so um some of these uh, would need additional uh, revisions for example it appears long so when our um lead artist would uh, listen to the um uh comments he would then do some revisions make the hair shorter or add some additional uh, details to the um drawings and also, uh, these are the stories written by the, uh, we have three chapters. Um, one, Labao Dungun, the first chapter is written by Adele. And uh, uh, she has her own uh, plot device and telling the story. Uh, she would start off with a modern character. And then, but of course, that will be shown in the manga already. And we also have uh, two chapters written by Alin Kanha, um, more on Humadap Nun. So this is how the page breakdown looks like. And the writer has already broken down the narr narrative and script into uh, bite-sized information for the artist to draw and create panels from. So we have the manga production process. So we have three lead artists, uh, Jay Vasquez, Christopher Brasileño, that's me, uh, Mia Reyes. And um, uh, they lead different artists, um, uh, for Jay, uh, he partners with Felde and Aragon for the colors. For whom adapt known, a lot of artists are also involved. Uh, I do the pencils and inks, and um, after that, final colors for the backgrounds. Um, 
artists Isaac Bravo and Eric Barbosa helped me with the 3D models. And base colors are done by Bricks Collection. And the same with uh, Humadap Non Chapter 3. It is uh, led by uh, Mia Re Reyes. And the backgrounds are also done by Isaac Bravo uh, back, uh, and Eric Barbosa and Bricks Collection as well. So these are just examples of uh, pages from the manga. Uh, these are pencils from the story uh, Humadap Non. And um, these are just images of um, uh, this shows um, the, um, the situation we're in, the Datu, uh, several Datu would um, rescue Humadap Non from Tarangban. And these are just uh, ex example images. Uh, this is uh, inks done by Jay. So after the pencils, uh, the artist would finalize it by adding uh, thicker lines or inks. And um, that would give it the manga look or the manga feel. And these are just examples of the modern characters that um, uh, are not necessarily interacting with the um, Sugidanan characters, but they are uh, used to tell the story. And uh, these are the intricate backgrounds created by Isaac Bravo for chapter three. So as you can see, these are very intricate lines. You can see all the details and the um, stones and the um, uh, foliage and the um, uh, greeneries and, and the plants in the background. So uh, Isaac Bravo's work is also very important. Uh, it gives uh, the lead artist an idea on how to um, uh, um, color the works after that. And after that, um, the artist Bricks Collation would uh, give flat colors to the um, characters. So it would be easier for the lead artist to change it later on and apply uh, colors to the backgrounds and apply details and make changes to color uh, choices by the base colors. And this is also another way of working with the 3D artist. Uh, for example, in this third panel, wherein um, uh, Humadap Noon is um, going inside the cave. Uh, so I gave an example of uh, the sketch of a um, draft of that particular scene and gave it to uh, Eric Barbosa, the 3D artist, and is able to create it into 3D version. So it can best, you can better uh, visualize what the cave looks like, the lighting, the texture. So it's easier to make iterations and make changes and apply different lighting conditions through 3D. Uh, so we don't always have to recreate it uh, manually by painting or drawing it. So uh, Eric has a um, different way of creating iterations for uh, the backgrounds. And finally, um, after all those images, uh, 3D images, uh, there is a synthesis of all those different assets from the base colors to the backgrounds, to the pencils and inks. And finally, the lead artist will put in her colors and the final rendering. So these are examples of um, color renderings by the lead artist, Mia Reyes, for uh, some of the last pages in chapter three. OK, so sometimes we ask ourselves, why? what's the importance of doing this project? Of course, uh, there's so many um, important reasons why we are using this uh, or we're, why we're doing this. But one of the reasons or one of the answers would be we are contributing to the heritage cycle. So let's start by understanding what is the content or what is the story about. And because we understand the story by reading it, by listening to it, um, we will value it. And then by valuing it, um, people will care for it and by caring, it will help people enjoy it. And from enjoying comes a thirst to understand and the cycle is, um, comes to a full circle and uh, it begins another cycle of understanding, of valuing, of caring and enjoying. So our next steps would be when we're done with the project, we will do our validation and um, our IP elders 
will give their comments, will give their um, suggestions and recommendations. And after that, we will be publishing it. So we will be publishing it sometime in the second week of uh, December. So we are very excited. And uh, actually, we're still working um, for the completion of the manga. And they were doing everything that uh, is needed so that we can come up with a really good and um, uh, really um, something that we can be all be proud of and our elders can also be proud of and happy to see. So thank you so much. And um, thank you for listening to my talk. Thank you so much, uh, Christopher, Eric, and Mia. No? Thank you to our three wonderful speakers for this morning's uh, talk. Not only have we been indulged in uh, stunning visuals for the past hour, we've also had the pleasure of listening to our speakers share the process of translating the Panay Sugidanun from its uh, oral literary form to something that is visible and tactile and generally uh, targeted towards a uh, younger audience. No? Now, I'd like to uh, invite uh, our audience uh, here in Zoom and as well as those who are listening to us, watching us via Facebook, uh, to type in their comments and questions for our speakers. And as we uh, wait for our uh, questions, for those questions to come in, no, that we, actually, we, we actually have already a couple of questions um, in, in the box. Uh, may I request our uh, three speakers to please turn on their video cameras? so that our audience members will be able to see you as uh, you answer the questions that are uh, uh, posed to you this morning. Let me start by, uh, with, with the first question. Uh, this one is uh, for all our speakers, no? for, for uh, Eric, for Christopher, and uh, for Mia. How different how different is this project compared to the ones that you've already done before? Uh, maybe we can start with uh, Eric. Yeah, hello. Can uh, you hear me? Eric. Yeah, loud and clear. Okay. Um, difference? Well, it's a lot of work <laughs> compared. <laughs> we've, had, uh, we've had projects, but way smaller than this. So this is... Yeah, it's a good experience. All right. It's a lot of work, but it's a good experience. Sounds sounds so much like um, I don't know, like our experience when we do something worthwhile, right? When we do something yeah, that's important yeah. to us. It's a lot of work, but it's worth the the effort. What about Mia? Mia, how, how different is this project compared to the ones that you've uh, already done before? Um, I think um difficult because um compared to my previous projects i have absolute freedom to do what i want for this project i have to put into consideration the um to get the vision right from the Sugidanon uh, chanters because they have uh, because personally for me I have very little background because on the Sugidanon lore because it's most of the materials are not accessible <laughs> right. it's, it's only just uh, really coming from the primary source no so yes yeah, I imagine that uh, posing such a great struggle. So it, it was much more difficult, Mia, compared to your previous. Yes, project. very. <laughs> okay. What about Christopher? Christopher, compare this project to the ones that, to the many others that you've already had. Uh, so I'm very fortunate to uh, have been working with Eric and Mia. So we've been working also 
uh, in previous projects like events. Uh, but of course, uh, this um, uh, project has its, its own set of challenges, especially we are working online most of the time and we are doing multiple tasks as well from researching to um, uh, um, illustrating the manga. And one thing that I'm really um, challenged is the, um, the, the processes that you have to undergo before we uh, can start the project. So I have to I have to admit that I'm not really aware of the um, issues around the ITSP and the FPIC process before the start of this project. But I'm thankful for this project that we were able to I was we were able to go through that project and we were able to get direct um, experience on how to file to the correct agencies and how to go through and um, um, uh, talk to the elders and um, go to the entire process, which is a lot of process, uh, validation and going back and forth. Um, it's really challenging, especially the, um, uh, as Eric have said in his presentation, there's uh, uh, some sort of a technological divide between us and um, uh, some of the people that we are talking to, for example, in their, they, have, they don't have a signal or they have a power outages. So these, all of these factors, are factors in the creation of the manga. And um, also, um, uh, I'm really happy that we're able to collaborate for, with um, Among Us and also younger artists uh, from researchers. Um, this is a project that cannot be created by a few people. A lot of people are involved in this project. Right, thank you. Thank you to, to uh, our speakers for, for sharing their uh, their experience with, with doing this project. We have a question from, from one of our participants. Uh, and I guess this is uh, also directed to all our um, uh, speakers here. Uh, why did you choose the medium of manga? Why manga of, of all the, the med media? No? How is the process of using this form of Japanese literature um, to tell kinaraya oral traditions. Maybe we can uh, start off with uh, Mia. Would you like to uh, answer that? Um, I've not. Um, manga is extremely popular nowadays, and even before manga was interested, I was um, popular here in Philippines. I was already doing manga manga projects with my friends and back then we were struggling because manga the medium the manga medium was not really acceptable back then because most of the people are into marvel marvel comics right right so right now manga has overtaken the the western western comics so most of the Western readers are into manga and manga has practically overtaken the world. So it's for me, it's the most uh, effective medium to tell a story without uh, spending so much budget on animation, TV series, and etc. Right, uh, Mia. That's that's very interesting to hear. No, I I, I would have imagined that uh, manga, the, the manga form, would be more popular here in the Philippines compared to, uh, compared to the, what what you said, uh, the, the the Marvel. Yeah, form because comics. Uh, there was a time around twenty years ago we self published our own manga. We took it to the printers and we tried to sell it to local shops that sell, that sells um, American comics. Right. When they saw our manga, they said, oh, we, we don't sell that kind of comics here. Our boss don't like that kind uh -oh. of work. They don't sell local, local work. So it was uh, very disheartening that time. And when I worked in an American studio, American agency that um, does Marvel, Marvel Comics. They told me to switch, to change my style 
from manga to American. And I, I had a very difficult time. And now, uh, most Marvel, um, most, uh, um, I mean, Mar Marvel Comics is actually now choosing artists that have manga style kind of work. It's, it's, it's an interesting uh, turn, turn of events. Thank you, yes. Leah, for, for sharing that. Uh, what about Christopher? Uh, why manga? Uh, yes, no, manga. Um, so I'm also thankful to Japan Foundation for giving us this opportunity to create a manga. So why manga? I guess um, um, as part of the heritage cycle, uh, we wanted to also take part in it. And... Um, I uh, would like to get the younger generation get interested in Sugidanon. Although Sugidanon is a different uh, text in itself as to the manga that we are doing, um, we are uh, giving or creating images to, to the stories that are oral. So what we're doing now is some sort of uh, our contribution. Uh, the Sugidanon has been uh, chanted and sung, and um, there have been... Uh, images that have been created of the characters before um, Sir Libby have been doing um, paintings based on the Sugidanon. Um, but what we're doing now is um, not only just the characters, we are also uh, creating images for the, the sequences itself, for the stories. And although uh, Sugidanon is a very long um, oral tradition and a very long content in itself and doing... Uh, illustrations for the entire uh, chants would take a long a long process so we just chose only those that are popular and something that could be an introduction an intro or a primer for younger generation who'd like to uh, read this manga who, read, who will read these comics and in the future I'd like to share this in, to the libraries and as an addition to the existing uh, local or the folk literature that the children have been reading. So this could be an addition, uh, another layer for educators also to, to use as reference. And uh, this is something that you can call Panay heritage. This came from Panay. We, this is a shared memory uh, for, uh, for our ancestors and for those uh, currently practicing the chants in Panay Bukudnon. Thank you, Chris. No, and as an educator myself, yeah, I, I can I can relate. No, we, we need all the help that we can get to make our learners, to make our children interested in, in the various disciplines that we teach, uh, be it uh, literature or uh, uh, social studies or maybe uh, other disciplines as well. Thank you for that. Uh, what about Eric? Eric, why, why choose manga of all media? media forms hmm. if i remember correctly um with um personally um i didn't choose manga it was just uh somebody floated the idea we have we have an art discussion group us us guys <laughs> sorry can't see me okay uh, okay um so we have an art discussion us guys and somebody floated the idea of making a manga and I said, you know what? We could use 3D on it. So, oh. so I'm in. That's great. That, that's, that's great. The, that's the story from my side. Yeah. Thank you, Eric. No, and uh, personally, I was really quite uh, intrigued by by how 3D uh, came came uh, into play in all these uh, processes. No, um, I guess. Uh, I'm one with us with so many others in our uh, audience who are really, really uh, in awe with, with what you've accomplished. And speaking of our uh, audience members, I'd like to uh, read some of our uh, comments here in the Zoom chat box uh, from Manolito Borja. Galeng, kudos to uh, all the uh, artists, no? uh, to all creative and passionate uh, Pinoy's preserving our rich cultural heritage and thank you to our Pinoy uh, Pinoy Panay Bukidnon elders. And now I'd like to get into the more uh, specific questions that we have here in our uh, one of our attendees. This one is uh, specifically for Mamiya. Uh, 
Mia, did you use or do you use references to draw the characters' poses or uh, do you draw from imagination? Um, I think it's safe to say that it's impossible to draw for from imagination nowadays. <laughs> okay. I use um, photo and 3D reference. But um, please take note, uh, most people tend to confuse reference with tracing. Um, reference is you just um, take inspiration, but you don't copy everything. You just uh, make your own interpretation of visual interpretation of the object that you are seeing. But um, for most part, I rely on Eric's 3D, 3D images that he provided. Yeah, thank you, Mia. I, I heard from, from previous discussions that uh, because of Eric's uh, 3D images, uh, a lot of the work was done more um, effectively, no? more efficiently also because he can just uh, manipulate these uh, images. Uh, Eric, how long have you been working with 3D images? Mm, years now, but I wasn't really focused on it. I was I started focusing on it when you know the pandemic hit. So oh. you know you gotta you gotta, you gotta make use of your time. All right, right, and uh, very very good out output no considering uh, all the time that we had in our hands I, I guess uh let, let me go to the next question now this one is for chris chris how did you communicate with the elders to get their comments on the visualization uh so um i'm very fortunate that we have sir Libby on our team so sir Libby, uh he lives in lambu um we have a family in lambu now and he would always go to the um, uh, talino and he has a uh, 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 know, um, he has a relationship already with uh, Panay Bikinon through his uh, previous research. Um, because of that, it's easier for him to contact the uh, elders who have now uh, uh, made use of um, the cell phones and laptops. And uh, uh, because we cannot go to the actual place and um, interview them and uh, do the validation process and the signing of the memorandums of agreement so everything now is like what we're doing here we do um zoom meetings and sir libby would um, um schedule a zoom meeting with uh, one of the elders Taimuluk, and he would screen share the images to him and he would get the feedback so that is our process right now and everything is done online we we text the um uh, the grandchildren of the elders uh, who are more knowledgeable about the uh, technology of doing Zoom. So uh, this would not have been possible no, before. Uh, it would be very difficult. But now uh, there's just some technological divide. Like, for example, very slow internet. Um, yeah. Those are yeah, those are the things that um, we cannot really... Um, you know, it, it, it has to be expected. But our mode of uh, communication is through Zoom, Facebook, uh, everything else that you can utilize. We, we, we made the most out of uh, <laughs> the available resources that we had, no? as we always do. Thank you for, for answering that question, Chris. And uh, before I go to the next question, I'd like to read some of our comments from uh, our uh, FB page. We are uh, still streaming live via Facebook. Um, Good morning. The illustrations are really good. Thank you for helping us visualize the char characters through this manga. Hopefully, this manga can be adapted as an anime and eventually be shown on Netflix. Uh, exciting prospects. Uh, another comment from our uh, FB uh, follower. Will the manga... Oh, this one is a question. Uh, will the manga follow the sequence of reading it from right to left? Or will it adapt the Western comics uh, of reading it from uh, uh, left to right? I yes. think Mia can, Mia, Mia. Mia, uh, Mia can answer. Um, I first, um, the sequence of reading would be more on the Western because it would be very difficult for those who are not familiar with manga 
to make adjustment. So this one would be, this one is catered to everyone. But we will also be having another version that is suitable for Japanese readers. Oh, wow, wow. Uh, that's, that's exciting news. Uh, we, we are certainly looking forward to that. Uh, some more comments here uh, in our Zoom chat box. Interesting to hear that our elders are already using uh, technology. Um, yes, to manga culture in the 1990s. Uh, another comment. Lots of manga readers uh, in Iloilo, but uh, very few venue for creators. Okay. Now let's go to uh, another question, and I guess this one is for Chris, no? Um, excellent job, everyone. Will the book be available for distribution to schools later on, uh, particularly public schools in Western Visayas? Um, yes, so our in December, it will be published online. So it is available for everyone to see. Uh, the, um, the comics that we did, it will be um, uh, put online. So everybody who has access to internet and has a cell phone or a laptop can access it. Uh, the printed version, it will be um, printed uh, around January. So we have um, um, allotted a uh, certain uh, number of um, books for distribution, uh, let's say among the people that we have partnered with or among the indigenous peoples. And uh, I believe it will be published in various languages in Japanese or in English or in um, uh, Kinaraya. Um, and of course, uh, the Kinaraya will be given to the Panay Bukidnon for, uh, for their, so that they can understand it in the language and uh, they can see themselves in the, um, in the images as well. And it will be published in some of them. It will be given to schools and libraries and hopefully um, the future can have more of this so we can distribute it to more schools. So the more people who can read this, the better. Will, the, will this be uh, for sale, Chris? Um, for sale because um, uh, it, for now, I suppose it's not yet for sale because uh, um, it will have another layer of um, um, agreements with uh, the Panay Bukidnon, it's another set of uh, contracts and they will, so it's um, another set of processes, but it is possible if we will um, do that one in the future. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. speaking, of, speaking of the entire process, now this is another question for, for everybody. Uh, because uh, since the start of the talk up until uh, our open forum, one very important challenge that's been repeatedly mentioned uh, for this project is uh, the work that it entails to closely coordinate with the Panay Bukidnon community, uh, who essentially uh, own uh, the Sugidanon. No? Uh, in effect, our Panay Bukidnon sisters and brothers are also artists in their own right. So um, from your end, how has this enriched your own appreciation, your own understanding of the art-making uh, experience, especially maybe in the sense of uh, ownership or owning your art? Uh, for example, uh, has this uh, affected how you now feel when artists adapt or translate your work? Maybe we can uh, start with Eric uh, to answer that. H how has this process enriched, uh, Eric, your understanding or your appreciation of uh, owning your art or uh, ownership of your art? Um, okay, I'm back. Um, yeah, owning your art. Um, Oh, well, as a photographer, it's a very touchy topic in the uh, photography world. Sometimes, you know, somebody steals your photograph and then posts it. And, you know, sometimes even blatantly ripping off your watermark and claiming it as their own. It's, um, you know, it's a you know, touchy topic for me. So um, you got to realize that 
um, if you call yourself an artist, you got to respect other artists also. So um, get the proper permissions always. That's that's what, that's what I just confirmed what I thought was right. Yeah, get the proper permission always. No? Uh, it's a very good uh, uh, quotation to put in every uh, <laughs> artist's uh, art studio. <laughs> what about what about Chris? Chris, uh, how has this enriched your your understanding or appreciation of ownership? No, because you said you've been telling me that talking this whole process has been uh, time consuming, a lot of work. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. from your end. Yes, so the issue of ownership. So uh, it would be very difficult, right, to if we create a manga and we really assign who owns this particular part because everybody, this is a collaboration. Uh, let's say I did the, the um, pencils, somebody did the ink, somebody did the colors. Um, so it's probably another topic for us to consider who really owns what, what part of this is, who owns which. Uh, especially a large chunk of our um, descriptions or the information also came from the researchers. So they're also part of that process. So I guess um, in a way, it kind of mirrors the, the ownership structure of our indigenous peoples because uh, for them, Sugidanon is owned uh, collectively as by their, by their own um, political structures or it abides by the own rules of their of the indigenous peoples. So um, basically the content or the um, story of the Sugidanon, uh, from what I know, um, it is their original, their indigenous knowledge systems and practices. So um, uh, this would this was really discussed in our previous activity. So they own the story and but of course, they also wanted to share this, so they they're not. Uh, it's it's easy for us to just ask permission. So if we uh, if we want to make a drawing, we can ask permission, and they always say okay as long as we follow with the um, the process and we do the validation. Um, it's accessible. We can really call it uh, part of Panay heritage as long as uh, we just ask for permission and we do with the correct processes to just ensure that um, it's a different because you know, the difference of the ownership structure for the for the Panay Bukidnon is also different from the uh, modern intellectual property rights of an individual artist. So those kind of um, mix sometimes and we have to be uh, sort of sensitive of the different um, nuances in their structures. Right, right. I agree. What about me? I'd like to hear from Mia regarding this uh, issue. Um, for this project, I cannot claim ownership. I can say I was part of this project, but I cannot claim this as my own because um, my effort, I mean, I, I cannot say that I have direct influence on the project it's more like i am contributing i contributed for this project i contributed but i never owned so it's more like parang communism <laughs> now <laughs> it's like i do not own. it's like um parang i'm part of a commune i do not own anything i'm just part of something that's a concept that I just grasp now because um, as an artist, I before before this project, I, I like complete ownership of something that I do. Um, parang I'm a totalitarian type of artist. <laughs> so um joining this project was new for me because um it's something that i cannot i cannot claim i have no ownership so so i get this conflicted uh, um feelings about okay um i invested 100% 
of my time and effort for something that I'm part of. So <laughs> it's a concept that um, different for me. Um, it's an experience, definitely. I cannot say it's bad or good or anything, but it's an experience. An experience. No, that, yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mia. No, and um, personally, I, I I appreciate this kind of uh, outlook, uh, if you may call it that way. No, on on art. No, it's uh, mm. particularly this kind of a uh, project that you've been working on. It's not something that can be uh, owned. It's something that it can uh, that can be contributed to, so that uh, it's literally owned by the community. You know, a very interesting uh, concept and insight that we gained uh, from this morning's conversation. And uh, as we are drawing to the end of the of the open forum, I'd like to uh, get in this uh, technical question, if you might know. Um, what? Uh, hang on. What recommendable tablets do you suggest for aspiring comic artists? It's a question from one of our Zoom participants. Obviously, um, we on we on tablet because <clears throat> okay, it's um the most um affordable um monitor tablet because for thirteen thousand you can buy your own smaller version because Wacom cost around 50,000. Oh, yeah, pricey. it's much more expensive. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mia. Um, and then we have some more comments here. Uh, still from Manolito, a bit of humor. Pinoy plus manga, panga daw, no? Uh, very Pinoy, very Ilongo humor. Uh, from Giselle Articolo, whoa, hopefully it will be for sale. The manga will be for sale and be available in hardbound copies as well, just like Junji Ito's manga. Wishful thinking, but uh, something very positive to, to look forward to. We have another question here, but I think this was uh, previously answered. No, uh, Did you work on this manga full-time or during your free time in the midst of another job? Uh, Christopher and Mia, I understand that you did this uh, on the side. Tama ba? Yes. That, right? <laughs> that was on the side. And uh, one of our uh, last few questions from Marie Andre Palion. No? Uh, maybe this one is for Christopher. What will be the protection of the Panay Bukid non uh, in terms of IPR, intellectual property rights? Uh, intellectual property rights. So their first protection is always the... Um, um, the the um, story of the Sugidanon is their indigenous knowledge systems and practices. So ha, I, their IKSP it is protected under the in the uh, Indigenous Peoples Rights Act, and uh, um, it's it's some kind of their intellectual property. The story of the Sugidanon is their intellectual property. So before we can use it, uh, like for example, uh, us writers or or artists or illustrators before we can, let's say, create images out of it or um, uh, create adaptations for it, especially in publishing or in research, we have to ask for their permission. So the only way for us to get the permission since the, the um, intellectual property of the story belongs not to just one person, but it belongs to the community of the Panay Sugidanon. So we have to go through and get the... Um, free prior and informed consent of the entire community. So that is equivalent to three barangays. And uh, but they don't not everybody will be signatories to the process. Only the elders and uh, whoever they assign as their um, the leader in their own political structures. In our case, it uh, was decided upon by around seven individuals. Some most of them elders and the leaders and their in their respective barangays uh, who belong to the Panay Bukidnon uh, um, as a political structure. So they're the ones who can give, uh, can sign the document saying that they allow us to use the, um, the story. And um, uh, it is overseen by the National Commission on Indigenous Peoples. So I would like to, I know this is also similar to what happens um, in the, the case of Wang Odno, um, um, if other people 
would utilize the culture of the of the tattooing of their particular tribe they have to go through the ncip and um, we have to be also vigilant as because uh, ncip cannot really monitor everything so we have to also help the um, indigenous peoples for, uh, when we see um, like mga, um, uh, instances wherein um, these steps may not be uh, followed but of course um, this is the uh, domain already of the of the national commissions of indigenous peoples they're the ones who who would can really answer the um in terms of protection of the intellectual property it's uh it's a lot it's a uh, very big topic and uh actually if i may share the our second seminar it was really really long and people were really interested in uh, um, learning about it and some of the points are actually answered during the time and it's uh, still available on Facebook if uh, anybody would be interested with IKSP and with the FBIC so these are a lot of um, abbreviations sometimes I get jumbled no? but um, these are things that we need to understand you know, when we're dealing with the indigenous peoples. Thank you, thank you, Christopher. No, indeed, a uh, very long, arduous process. But uh, all of us here understand that uh, if we'd like to stay true to to our heritage, if we'd like to maintain the authenticity of these uh, works of art, of these uh, um, cultural icons, uh, all these processes have to be uh, gone through. Uh, we still have questions coming in here on Zoom and on Facebook, but unfortunately, this is all the time that we have uh, for this morning. No, it's been an engaging discussion and conversation with three supposedly very shy uh, Ilongo artists. No, um, usually these uh, individually these people uh, are, are very quiet and very reserved. But I I'm really glad that uh, for this morning. Um, you can really feel the passion in the way that they talked about their art, the way they talked about the process, the communal collaborative process of creating this uh, wonderful crossover um, um, translation of sorts no? from a Panay Bukidnon um, oral literary tradition to something that is uh, Japanese inspired of sorts. Uh, as a manga form. And with that, I'd like to thank our three speakers here this morning for joining us and for sharing their uh, process and experience in working on this project. Thank you so much, Christopher, Eric, thank and Mia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now at this point, to, uh, before we formally close our program, just a uh, few words of reminders no? and some words from our sponsor. Thrive Art Projects would also like to thank our partner, the Japan Foundation Manila, for making this event possible as part of the Japan Foundation's Asian Literature Pro uh, Project, Yomu. Please join us for the fourth webinar on December 11, about the preservation of mythologies with Dr. Grace Nono and Professor Yoshiyuki Ikura. Also, please follow the Japan Foundation Manila and Thrive Art Projects on our social media pages to stay updated about the upcoming webinar, as well as the launch of the Golden Realms Sugidanun Manga by Ilongo Artists in December. Meanwhile, participants are encouraged to please answer our questionnaire and to like our social media pages. You may scan the QR link that you can find on your screens right now, or you can also follow this link, no? uh, tinyurl.com slash goldenrealmsw1. Uh, so you can, uh, we have also posted uh, this link in the comments section. Your answers, your comments, your suggestions will certainly help us with planning future events. Thank you again for joining Golden Realms and we hope to see you in the next talk. This is Early Sol Gadong. Arigato gozaimasu. Maraming salamat. 
Rako Gid, nga salamat sa tanan, maayong aga sa aton tanan.